Hello everyone, this is Tommy Buckley from Crowbar and Soil and Grain. They are people. I'm here today to uh, show you my gear, what I'm playing on still these days. We'll start off with the drum kit. This is a, a Sonar D-Light. It's all maple shells, um, very thin, the sound. Uh, I think it's like a, like a five ply, it's like very thin. Uh, reinforcement hoops around the edges. These shells are actually, uh, they're out of make. They're discontinued. They don't make these shells no more, so when something breaks on them, it's very hard to find a part. But anyhow, uh, these shells are now, uh, the series is called Highlights, I believe. Uh, I think they changed the name from D-Light to Highlight, but they're beautiful drums. This is a, a, a brilliant champagne sparkle is the technical name for the finish. I believe the snare is, uh, I play a, a five by 14. It's not a piccolo. I like a shallow snare because I'm very short. I sit low, very low to the ground. So my legs are flat, but uh, that's why I play on this crazy tilt. For all you drummers around the world, everybody who asks me, how do I play like this? It's just, I played myself into a rut, people. Uh, I mount old school. I like a top post mount. I don't like a, uh, I don't like a snare stand mount. I like a top post mount. Old school style like Dave Grohl, uh, like uh, old school drummers. But um, I like that style of playing. So I got a large rack time here. I think it's a 12 by 14. This floor time here is a, um, is a 18 by 16. This is a 16. And uh, on the kick, we have a 18 uh, by 22. So I used to play a lot bigger drums. I had a, a Yamaha kit for many years. Every Soul and Green album was recorded on the old Yamaha kit. So I had two 24s, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18. So dude, when I got this kit, I scaled it down. On the heads, uh, I used to use Remo over the years. I just switched many years ago to Evans. It wasn't anything personal. I just started leaning toward Evans. So uh, I usually use the, uh, on the tops I use the G2s, which is a two ply clear. And uh, on the bottoms, it's just a uh, single ply G2, uh, G1 actually, G1s, I'm sorry. But um, on the uh, heads, the same thing. Uh, the front is uh, Ebony, I believe, Evans. I've been using the front with uh, uh, one of the porthole, uh, kick portholes that actually uh, Dwayne Simido from our recording studio where we record at, he gave me that, so it's pretty cool because engineers can't tear up your front head on tour. Symbols, you know, um, I'm still endorsed by uh, Rude. I'm not endorsed by Sonar anymore. I used to be, but I'm, I'm still endorsed by Peisty. I use the Rudes uh, for durability. Um, I always like to play crash rides because uh, they're a little thicker than a regular crash. And you know, you basically you can ride on anything if you want. Um, you know, when I usually ride on my cymbals, I usually stay on my ride and one single crash ride over here. I have two 18s. Um, I, I like to play parallel. I play two 18s and two 17s. That's what I do. With Soil and Green, I do an 18, uh, 17, 16, 14. I have two Chinas, uh, two Splashes, a rod. It's a, it's a whole massive setup, people, with Soil and Green. But with Crowbar, I like to scale it down and keep it simple. And I like to keep it parallel, you know, uh, two and two, two 18s and two 17s. This is a, a 20 inch uh, Alpha, Peisty Alpha metal rod, which is also discontinued. Peisty actually gave me a set of cymbals back in uh, 2011. And uh, they gave me like two crashes and a, a rod and a set of hi-hats. And uh, it was just, they were just trying to push the cymbal. And uh, of course I took it and now they don't make them anymore. So I saved the uh, hi-hats. I have a set of hi-hats at home and one crash. And uh, I probably should retire this ride cymbal, people. But I'm still playing on it because I love the way it sounds. It's a great sounding cymbal. This is the 14 uh, Rude. I usually play with uh, Sound Edge hi-hats, which is a ripply bottom, and it lets the air out of the cymbal, so it gives you a little bit brighter, chickier sound, you know, when you hit it a little more, uh, a, a little more uh, brightness on it. But um, I like Rudes. I, I usually play the Rudes on tour for durability because I crack cymbals a lot on tour because I play really hard. And <laughs> metal rock and roll, people. On my pedals, playing Charzy Capitos these days. Uh, it's a Polish pedal company. Thank you, uh, Vladislav Sullivan. 
He's the man. Um, you can check him out. Uh, you know, Charlie Capito, uh, PrettyShorts.com. Um, they're amazing pedals. He does uh, custom laser engraving on them. As you can see here, I got the John Bottom rings and the uh, Swan Song Angel on the logos. I have another set that's actually got crowbar and a Florida lead, but I have to keep those for touring in Europe. I'm old school. I used to play Tama Iron Cobras, so for me, it was like a cave pedal going to a stealth pedal. You know, these things are like that. I, I call them the hammer of the gods. You know, they get a joke. That's the joke I have. They get a kick out of it, but uh, they're pretty powerful. Once you uh, once you get the you push a little harder, but tell you uh, honestly, I feel like I built up my calf muscles and my thigh muscles more uh, since. You know, it's helped me build up my legs and my strength. Um, but these pedals are amazing. You know, I used to use all my sonar hardware on tour. I stopped using it because it was a little complicated for me. The uh, the boom stands were. Uh, two pieces. The 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 boom was one piece, and the tilter was a separate piece that slipped on the boom. So, if if the top tilter came loose, and then the cymbal would fall and do this. So, eventually over the years, I just kind of scratched the sonar hardware, especially since I'm not endorsed by them anymore. Um, I just started using these Tama stands, and honestly, I think these are the the best stands ever made. It's the simplest stand. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a pretty basic concept and, um, you know, I, I actually don't want to use anything else after using these stands. I've been using these stands forever and uh, I swear by them, you know, and uh, I actually recommend them to people out there, to different drummers that are open to using different hardware with a different brand name drum shell. If you're not crazy about keeping it all the same brand. Well, on the sticks now, I used to play uh, Regal Tip. Um, you know, Regal Tips been having some problems with uh, uh, nylon tips and tip machines and, you know, I'm hearing all kind of crazy things about the company still open but not operating and it's going to open back up. So I had to switch. I couldn't stick around and wait and, you know, it's just I love the sticks but I had to go with Vader thanks to a good friend of mine, uh, Chris Hamilton, and thanks to uh, Chad Brandolini. Advanced sticks now. I now play uh, um, the Fatbacks, three A's. Um, this is what I'm playing on. It's a little strange for me because I went from a basic uh, marching style drumstick with uh, tips that were like that big to that big. So it was a little bit of getting, you know, some adjusting and getting used to for me. But uh, I really do like the sticks. You know, uh, they hold up really well and. Uh, you know, thanks to the people at Vader, man, for having faith in me uh, this late in my career and uh, taking me into the Vader family, man. I'm very grateful and, and uh, happy to be a part of the Vader family. This is a, uh, a Peter Erskine free, it's a standalone stick bag. The, uh, the reason I was about to say freestanding was it used to be licensed to Yamaha drums. And um, I guess when Peter left Yamaha, he went to uh, DW drums. So when Peter Erskine left DW, uh, excuse me, Yamaha, he took his uh, design to DW, and um, basically it's a it's just a uh, it's a freestanding stick bag. Uh, you can use it like a little music table top. It basically uh, it folds into a table where you can set your sticks right on top. There's a bumper guard on each side to stop them from rolling off. Um, it's pretty cool. We got a couple of compartments here for keys and stuff, but uh, it's a it's a quick uh, basic thing where it folds and it zips. And then uh, basically it's just, uh, it unvelcros from the inside, you fold it under, and it just, uh, it just flaps, you know? So, that's it, people. Peter Erskine, standalone stick bag. On the lookout for Vermilion Whiskey. I'm dropping the bomb. I just did a record with these guys. It'll be coming out next year. So, all you drummers out there, or any musicians, anybody that's interested, and just checking out music gear. Um, you know, check out the Peisty website. Um, check out, absolutely check out Charzy Capito, please. Great pedal company. Uh, check out Vader. Uh, you know, um, you can check out Sonar. They've been around forever. It's an old German drum company. Uh, I'm not endorsed by them anymore, but uh, you know, uh, anybody who at Ludwig might be watching right now, hey man, 
I'm open. My door's open. I heard y'all just took on Brad Wilk. Look, man, anyway, I love Ludwig. I'm open to anything. Anybody who wants to take me on, I'll play you 100%.